Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday live stream where we are continuing our playthrough of Melania. Gonna be playing this all week, baby, trying to finish the campaign. And so far, things going pretty all right. Things going pretty all right. We've gone ahead and cleared everyone off of our continent at this point. And um, we're ready to move from a fairly militaristic approach, some might say, to probably something based a lot more on infrastructure and research and just teching up here. I mean, sure, we can assemble an invasion force for the other continent once we discover how to cross oceans, but I don't think that's gonna be necessary. Hopefully, we'll see. Hey, Vermin. Do, 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 how about Age of Dragons and Alternate Crisis Air? I guess that's one of the things, one of the things we talked about the other day was like what kind of DLC and expansion they could do for this game. I guess they can just keep slapping some ages in there. <laughs> that's kind of interesting. <laughs> and I guess you can you can keep loading up uh, more innovation and chaos events too, just to add some extra um, variety. Gamer Chief or Chef, Gamer Chef, thank you very much for the uh, the brand new sub. Remember your Twitch Prime, that's much appreciated. You know, spend those Bezos bucks. Don't let him keep it. We use the Age of Blood to create the sauce for our pizzas. Woo! I mean, our religion is indeed pizzaism, which is present. Oh, I guess that doesn't actually tooltip for us, but it is present in New York. There it is, right over there. <laughs> Pizzaism, which is our sort of state religion. Um, and we're going to spread that all over our continent. It's spread to Pittsburgh already, which is good. We may end up having to use... Is this under arts powers? Adopt religion. We may have to use some, some powers to get it to spread a little bit more quickly. We'll see how it goes. Lots in the game so far. So I'm really very much enjoying it. Um, I, I have to say, like, one of the things... I know there's been a, a couple of poor reviews. Um... I didn't enjoy it the first time I played it because it didn't click. It actually took it took until after my second playthrough, I'd say. Then it finally clicked in and now I'm there. So there's definitely because I think the thing with this game is there's a lot of different systems. And until you see how they all kind of weave together, you're like, well, I'm not really getting it. So now I'm really enjoying the game. Um, I mean, is it going to be a Civ killer? I don't know. I think it's pretty good, but... Who knows? <laughs> Can we see the blood on York's walls? Oh, yes, the bloodstone walls. We do have them up. I mean, they're just sort of like barbarian-y spiked walls over here, but they do look really cool. Right? We did... Oh, it would be down here. Sorry, I was looking I was looking at all these, uh, these locked out ones, but no, there's our bloodstone walls over there. I mean, the image, we got some skulls and stuff. I don't know if they show up on the... These may be little skulls right here. I can't zoom in any more than that, but there's these little white things. And certainly we got lots of cool flags all over the place. And flags, as we know, very, very, very important. So we've got that there. Lack of blood is a little disappointing. We want more blood? Okay, we'll see what we can do. Maybe the devs can do something for that. Maybe that's the DLC we want. Bloodier walls. Uh, thank you to people who are resubbing right now. That is much appreciated. Member has come in for 110 months. Thank you very much. Excel Miguel's at 54 months. Defective Automaton's at 85. Daedalus is at 109 months. Spectura is at 11 months. Oh, almost the Twitch anniversary. Your Mongo is at 38 months. Crease Through's at 23. Doc Villain at 45. This is the Ghost of the Last Emperor. Of course, Doc Villain, one of our characters in the CK3 run. Warwolf is at 91 months. At Vaif Baif, now that's a fun name to say, is at seven months. Uh, Anon Giles is at 96. 96 divisible by 12. It feels like a Twitch anniversary number. Is it eight years? I think that's eight years from Anon Giles. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Uh, you know, keeping the channel going. It's much appreciated. I like that we can keep this going. What a dream. What a dream. The AI in my game triggered the Age of Heroes for me. Ooh, I'll share how that goes later in the Discord. Nice. Curious, I haven't even looked at the Age of Heroes uh, um, text. I mean, I'm sure these things are starting to be assembled on some sort of uh, wiki or something like that, but I haven't experienced it in game yet, so I haven't actually looked at it. <coughs> Total War sells Blood DLC? Really? Graduating from Civ to Millennia is like moving the mouse to the opposite side of the keyboard. That's interesting. It is just sort of unfamiliar and different. In the end, you're sort of getting to the same place. Yeah, that is interesting. Excuse me. I mean, I hit the mute button, but still. Um, I was just talking about Civ as like sort of 
Civilization was sort of like high school. And then when you got into the Paradox Grand Strategy games, it was like going to university. Not necessarily that it was harder, but that it was more specialized. You know, Civ you're, you're, and, and games like it, which now include Millennia, cover a broad, broad swath of history um, in kind of a, a fairly uh, high concept way. And of course, obviously gameplay comes first, so it's got the sort of zoomed out aspect. But so to me, the, the Civ type games, including Millennia, are generalist games. And then you go and specialize in a time period, and that's when you do the Paradox Grand Strategy games. Um, we got some gift subs coming in. Thank you very much. I think we got the crazy chemist giving one. That is very appreciated. And Anon Giles also gifted a gift sub to the channel. And then Warwolf dropped a 10 bomb. Thank you very much, Warwolf. 10 gift subs to the channel. I, um, and Garmakosh, thank you so much. I got some stressing news today, so that's really, I'm really appreciating that. It makes makes a big difference to the channel. And I, gift subs are such a great way to grow the community. If you did just get gifted a sub, um, then uh, note that you can join the Discord. If you link your Discord to your Twitch account, uh, you should be able to get into the Discord channel. Um, and may maybe I'll have to force a manual sync right after the stream just to make sure that uh, that happens in a timely fashion. <clears throat> ah, yes, there's the wiki. Excellent. Yeah, we'll be checking on that and see how, how well it's being updated. Anyway, let's play some video games. Let's play some video games. Oh, you asked us, you moved to a Mac after 35 years in Windows. By far the hardest switch was from mouse to trackpad. Oh, golly. Yeah, I mean, I, my laptop is a is a very old MacBook. And I like it because to me, it has the best trackpad I've ever used. I don't like trackpads very much, but I like the one on my on my Mac. And I've dabbled with Macs before. When I was a teenager, I had um, I had a Mac back then for, for a little while. Um, and uh, for a while, my main computer here when I... The last time I quit my day job to do an internet thing, um, I had a, uh, a nice big power Mac to uh, to do things because it's a nice, as a programmer, the Mac's a nice environment because you get all the Unixy kind of like stuff available to you. But, uh, but, you know, PC for games, right? Anyway, as I was saying, we're gonna start playing the game. So we got New York over here, which is our homeland. We would normally refer to it as our capital in a lot of the games. But um, in this game, the term capital is used for um, Sort of broadly, ca capitals kind of just their name for what we would call a city because um, the things are divided into regions. Like so it's the region of New York with the capital over here. We got a smaller town of Wilmington. So it's a little bit, you know, fuzzy wuzzy around the way there. But we've got we've got our homeland. It is growing. We got to queue up some con some um, some production here. Uh, and yeah, we did go on a conquest spree powered by the mm, maybe slightly overpowered Raiders national spirit. It's pretty ridiculous. I mean, maybe we would have still conquered our whole continent there. Again, we're not playing on the hardest difficulty right now, so who knows how it'll go. Uh, I'm starting. I've got some private games going on now on the hardest difficulty to see how that goes. But uh, yeah, we just went and conquered everyone on this continent. The entire continent is entirely occupied by us. Well, there's no one else on there. There's no neutral people. Certainly barbarians, barbarians are still spawning. We do have some blank spots in areas where we're going to want to expand with a settler. I do have a rinder set for when we've got enough government XP and the cooldown is up to spam some settlers. We're going to try to generate those very often. News from abroad, Persia and Brazil have ended their war. Okie dokie, that seems fine. <clears throat> is there an earth map to play on yet? Ooh, not that I know of. I actually don't know how that works. I don't know, There's. I don't think there's a map editor for the game yet. I don't know. Really don't know the answer to that. Anyway, back in New York, we just completed the seat of power building, which is going to give us more government XP and diplomacy XP. But mo the diplomacy, the government one is the one that like you, I think you always want government XP. There's almost always something to do with it somewhere along the way. You've either unlocked a new government that you want to power through, or there's still a lot of government powers that are quite handy. Other than that, New York needs sanitation, but we don't have a building to help with that. It also needs a little more housing. But again, we don't have a building to help with that. Both of those would be improvements. We could slap down a market square just to start opening up the um, import mechanics. That might be interesting. Uh, I could build the meeting hall here for some diplomacy XP, the encampment for warfare XP, but we're not... We don't currently have anything to spend Warfare XP on. We do not have a National Spirit associated with it. Um, yeah, it also gives more combat XP for our units, but I don't know that we need it. The Watch has Unrest uh, Suppression, but currently we've got some units parked in New York for that. The Keep itself, Warfare XP and bigger defense. The Great Hall, again, more Diplomacy XP. I'm wondering... The Galley, um, we, can't, we can't enter the oceans yet, so... I'm actually thinking about running... 
one of these projects. Unfortunately, we don't have treaties yet, but I'm wondering about doing levy workers for a little bit. Or you can convert to wealth and use it to rush construction items. That's an interesting idea. But I'm wondering about levy workers for just a little while because we've got some improvements we could be doing. So I think that might be the plan. Meanwhile, in Nicomedia, who which we recently went and integrated into our realm, we finished the meeting hall there. Completed. Meeting hall. Meeting hall. Oh, unless... And meeting hall is one per nation. I wonder, did Nicomedia build this for themselves right before we integrated them or something weird like that? Might just be a graphic glitch, you know, because I just loaded the save. It, there might be something like that going on. Um, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a granary. Currently, Nico does need a little bit more food. I mean, we could do it with train improvements as well, but we've got, you know, our improvement points are only coming in so quickly. Um, I think this might be a good idea. It also says one region level, but we already have one region level from the food stockpile. So I don't think that's going to change, but it's going to generate an extra 12 food that we didn't have before. So I think that's going to be a good one over here. Wasn't Nico a major Roman city? Yeah, but <clears throat> the Romans for some reason don't exist anymore on this continent. I don't know what could have possibly happened to them. You see Alundi's uh, number over here is in red. They are currently at their population cap. Unless they get a plus one to a region level, which could happen if this vassal decides to build its own granary or whatever. But also this might be a good candidate when we reach our culture cap, we might want to drop a town for Ulundi. Okay, one unit just chilling here. Nico seems fine. Unrest is, is fine over here, but you know, a little bit of anti-barbarian something, something that's going to be okay. This envoy, right, this envoy is on its way up. We're going to send it all the way over to Topeka to help it uh, accrue its integration points because I think we're going to look to integrate it and make it one of our cities. Although we'll have to check to see what the cultural upkeep and how much unrest that's going to generate. And we might decide to keep it at a vassal for a little bit longer, but sure, why not? Uh, this group of troops over here, which includes a pioneer... Oh, yes, we want to build an outpost over here so we can build a bunch of monasteries. Now remember where we're at. We have the Theologian's national idea here, and we unlock traits in here with Arts XP, and we're currently not generating very much. Um, we think because we were in the Age of Blood, it, it may be possible that one of the early arts buildings is simply not available to us. So our Arts XP rate is pretty low. We've improved it a little bit by building a jeweler in New York. So we get one in New York as a base. We've got one more from a jeweler, but that's still not much. We can build monasteries at outposts, um, and then uh, they uh, they will generate some more for us, but they need to be on hills. So coming over here so that we can do that. You, I guess they're there to help support Nico. We could also just leave you in Alexandria because it has no units currently. So I think I want to just stop you in Portland, this town here. The barbarians love to raise the towns, which is more than a little bit annoying. I mean, it's an effective mood. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to criticize them for that. But for us, it's a little bit annoying. Okay, reminder of a toolsmith. So let's go and take our cities and just assess where they're at in terms of resource production. So I think this was going to be for New York because we have two ingots in New York. And I believe a toolsmith will consume two ingots to generate production. Yeah. And it's going to generate more engineering XP for us, which is nice. Yeah, let's do this. Although we also need middens some more and things like that, but that's going to be okay. So we've got that. We also need middens in New York, but yeah, I think it's a good thing that we might be running this project for a little while. We'll reevaluate. When we finish the research here for medieval universities, certainly we're going to want to build a university, I'm sure, in New York. But for now, I think I appreciate the extra improvement points. Right? You think the troops from Springfield come out yellow? Uh, I'm going to reject the alliance. The other continent's probably going to keep warring with itself. And I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a pacifist. I wouldn't, I don't want to get involved in wars. That's silly. Join up. Come over here. Let's boot this, please. Thank you very much. I understood medieval universities. Just wondering what they teach. Yeah, that, that is what the tech we're researching. Medieval universities. Um, ooh, let's go for the government XP. We'll also take a little acceleration on the culture. So 
With the culture, one of the things I said was we could go and build a town. So for example, Alundi here is no longer growing. We could build a town here, which will, first of all, it'll let us expand its borders a little bit easier, but we'll also give it a region level, which means um, it will be able to keep growing its population. And that might be something. Um, it wouldn't be a bad thing to run Cutting Edge again, getting those innovation points up a little bit higher. I think probably a town. We could always local reforms. It's still a powerful thing. Heck, a big Eureka might still be kind of nice. I think I kind of like the idea of starting to just pop out a few towns here and there. I think I'll do that. Alexandra and Pittsburgh are going to need a town soon as well. I, like, I think we'll do this. There's Lawrence. Lawrence, Kansas. There's probably multiple Lawrences in the United States. Uh, and here I'm just saving up for the Kingdom Reformed. I don't really need the Scudage or the Provix an Province Annexers. I think I'm okay on that. Um, yeah, there's seven turns cooldown for Spawn Settler. We could run the Order Research. So this is based on the population and prosperity of a vassal. Umong over here is population 10 at 300 prosperity. I think we do this. I wonder how much tech it's going to give us. It's going to tell us in tooltip. 30 knowledge. That's two turns worth of tech for 20 government XP. I'm sure it's going to get more expensive every time. This seems like a, a good win. Let's go ahead and trigger this. It is going to eat 50 of the prosperity, but that's okay. It'll bounce back. There you go. Shave two turns off our medieval universities. That seems okay. Do the barbarians ever get more technologically advanced? The units they spawn do get a little stronger um, as you go through the eras. I don't know if they get like insanely advanced in the later era. Okay, we got, yeah, we got to spend some improvement points here. So New York does need a midden. Other than that, I think they're pretty good on their consumption. So let's go and build one. Yeah, Warbrands could maybe use the difficulty slider. I, I could I could like to see that because I can see people wanting to play on, say, high difficulty AI, but easier barbarians or the other way around. Lower difficulty AI, but raging barbarians. That's what we need. We just even like not even a slider as so much as do you want barbarians to be normal, aggro or chill? That's most games um, can use something like that. We still have enough points for another improvement. Let's take a look at Nico. Nico does need a lot of love because it's fairly new. Um, got dwellings over this. We haven't even expanded back into that. It really needs some food. Well, let's go ahead and build a pasture here because that'll generate some meat. And it's already got a hunting camp over here on the deer. Oh, that needs to be replaced. So we may as well do that. Do we have, um, I don't think I've got enough for the, where's our cooking? Did we unlock the kitchen? No. So probably what we'll do is put in a reminder for a salt house for Nico. Because it's got a bunch of meat. We can salt some of it for a nice production boost. So we'll probably do that. Uh, we do have some exploration points. I could go and claim this territory immediately. But I think we're going to expand into that fair. Oops. Missed. I think we're going to expand into that fairly quickly. You can see this is starting to fill up. Um, so I think it'll take it back. I'm going to save. This is getting more and more expensive every time you use it. I'm probably going to save this for things like expanding onto a hill, which is usually a pretty slow thing. Why stopping the New York jewelry? Oh, did it? Is it not being worked now all of a sudden? Yeah. So it's prioritizing different things. It's hurting our arts XP. I think it's okay. Yeah, so we're only generating the one arts right now. Oh, did we? No, we haven't popped this down yet. So I think this is where we're going to do it, because basically everywhere we could find was basically just going to be adjacent to two hills. So we're going to outpost here. And then there we go. We now have the ability to build these monasteries, which are going to be pretty important for the Arch XP. Now the outpost itself, uh, can I specialize to a castle? I need 40 engineering XP for that. We may want to just make sure it doesn't get burned down, but really we're going to have defensive troops over here. So that's going to hopefully be sufficient. So you've cleared that out. 
mean, probably there's going to be some more. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this crossbow and send it back over this way. And I'm going to send three of our raider bands over to there just to make an army of pure raider bands, which is going to maximize their movement. And then this last feller over here, we might rendezvous with this group. Oh, this is my settler. Right. We're going to make a fishy town. Yes. Boom. New vassal, Seattle. Hey, on the West Coast. Almost feels accurate. So yeah, you're going to go there. Oh, I have a reminder to spawn a pioneer. Yes, because I'm going to want more outposts. Now, I think the land around Nico had quite a bit of hills, although I don't want to infringe on its own territory. I guess I can outpost right here. And that'll let me build a couple of monasteries and then also presumably collect these resources. Although this will also be a pretty good place for a town. That's the thing with the outposts. I kind of don't want them to block a possible future town. I could put one over here. Looking for places with at least two hills. We're probably going to build down here too. Rename Seattle as Fraser County. Do 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 do. My was my salad and scrambled eggs. Do it again. Right? That's how the theme song goes. Something kind of like that. It's been a long time. You know what? There's some good spots over here. Maybe right here. These are all going to be vassals that I'm probably not going to go and incorporate. So I don't think they'll expand too quickly. So let's go and plan on putting here. This will actually have three hills. And then we could also collect this gold as well. Okay. Uh, you're going to chill out there, my buddy. Don't move around. You can continue your move. You can continue your move as well. The envoy heading north. You know, here, and I think, yeah, you're going to relax in Portland. Just to reduce the chance that it gets insta sniped. Yeah, you'll move here and just join in protecting this town. There's a good chance we're going to move these guys out from time to time. If, like, a barbarian encampment spawns here or something we want to respond to. But their job is to keep this area safe. Now, I have improvements ready to go. So, if I go and build this monastery, check our arts. One per turn right now. Build it. Two per turn. Lovely. Let's build another one. Okay. Um, now, presumably, this is linked to a town. It's linked to Belfast. So it's sending to Belfast also a bunch of religious texts and just um, even ignoring that, just some raw pizzaism belief. Now, they don't actually have the religion in place yet, so they don't have a need for it currently. Um, so in theory, that's sort of kind of wasted, but that's fine. There's an option to change the linked region. If there's no distance decay, that's kind of interesting. What we can do is wait if, uh, well, actually, New York does have a need for more religion. So let's see if I change you to New York. So this outpost should be producing eight raw pizzaism plus two lo religious texts for an extra 12 each. So 20 pizzaism. New York is definitely being satisfied. Can I see? Yeah, it's gotten 12 from the goods consumed, so that's full. And I'm betting it had a base of two and then eight more from um, the monastery. So I think that's working out very good. Religious text equals pizza topping recipes, maybe. Yeah, menus, I don't know. Yeah, so no fallout for distance is very interesting. So it defaults to the closest, but you can change it to anything you want. It's not giving you more, but it's giving you more control over things. That learned five turns. We'll be able to do the kingdom reform before that happens. Arts. I think I'm still good with not spending anything, although we do have the religious stuff. But no, what we need to do is we need to keep working on theologians more than anything else. Um, yeah. Large temple generates arts XP relative to the population in a region. This is probably the next thing we need to do because we need to focus on things that will give us more art so that we can progress down the, the tree that much more. So that will indeed be the priority. Um, right. I think I was going to send you to Seattle. And you can just chill in Miami. That's going to be cool. All right. Spain and Brazil have ended their war. Oh, Salt House. Yeah, except I spent the points, so we're not going to be able to do the Salt House this turn. But yeah, I'm happy we're getting the extra um, production here. An extra 9.6 improvement turn points right now, I think, is very valuable for us. 
Interesting, a religion tree. Well, it's it's actually, I mean, it's a tree of the national spirits, right? We've previously done the Raiders one. We've got a tree for our kingdom as well, which is our government. So there's a lot of little trees, a lot of buttons to hit. That's what I keep talking about. There's a lot of systems in this game and it's not entirely intuitive your first time or two playing it, which is why I understand that, you know, people who are tight on time for their reviews might not get the full gist of things. Now, doesn't mean doesn't mean I'm necessarily right about it being a good game. Maybe it'll turn out once we play a little deeper, we'll be like, ah, this sucks. But seems pretty good. I'm really enjoying it right now. Chilling my M doesn't sound too bad. True. Construct outpost. Okay. Before I go, hmm, I was gonna say, before I go and build more monasteries. But maybe I do want to build more monasteries immediately. Belfast really needs some housing. So the dwelling is five housing. The villa is 10 and gives wealth and luxury. There's no luxury need in Belfast yet, but the wealth is going to be nice. I think we slap it down. And it's so much more housing. Belfast is going to be good for a long time, so we'll do that. Well, it's in the burbs. It's outside of Springfield over here, so that's going to be all right. Down to 12 points. Not a whole lot to spend more this term. That's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And you sit here and guard. That's not much of a defense. But we do have some reinforcements that can come from nearby as well, if there happens to be a barbarian here. But it might be kind of safe, because it's kind of surrounded by a lot of cities. Hopefully Vikings don't come here and plunder our monasteries. I mean, if nothing else, plundering monasteries, like Vikings that are plundering, kind of sounds like my job. How much Germanic Spear are we getting per turn? Five per turn. Okay, so in two turns we can do the reform, which is going to be nice. Coming in the stream... Uh, slash game mid game is like learning new in that language without beginner course. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the thing is these systems do get introduced sort of slowly per era, but still. All right. Yeah. You're going to go and chill there. Okay. Now we got a remainder for the salt house. Now, where was that going to be? I'm thinking that was going to be in Nico, right? Cause you had the extra meat. Yeah. So if we put down a salt house improvement, are these all hunting camps? Yeah, no one. The AI, I, villas and stuff like that, or sorry, vassals do love to spam out these hunting camps. Now a salt house converts to meat. We could actually replace one hunting camp. Because right now we're at five meat. We could replace one with a salt house, leaving us at four meat, two of which is being salted. And then we could build another one to process it later on. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. The only reason I'm mean, usually hesitant to put something on the grasslands because um, other than these hunting camps, the grasslands tends to be the tile that is used by more things. Clay pits only go on grasslands. Farms only go on grasslands. There's an empty scrubland to the north. Perfect. We'll put it there. That's going to that's gonna save us the trouble. Um, so yeah, in, in my opinion, if I can put things on scrublands, I do those first just because, again, other than the hunting camps, I don't usually weight the scrublands that high. There might be some other tech later that, that does it, but right off the top of my head, I don't know. So yeah, we'll build this. Nico's food mead went from 123 to 156, so that's a good improvement. And it can still support another salt house. Actually, how much was that? Do we have, a, oops, do we have enough for it now? No, but I'll put another reminder, and we might slap another one down next turn. And yeah, I might replace one of the hunting gaps. Actually, I will get a 25% refund on the hunting. I'm, mm, I don't know. That might give me enough. I don't know how much the hunting camp costs, and I can't check it now. Um, unless we have an empty scrubland somewhere. There might be another. Oh, hold on. If I just click here, I can see it. Hunting camp is worth six. I get a quarter of it back. That's not going to be enough, depending on how the rounding goes. I need a third of it back to do it this turn. So we'll just wait one turn. I think we're good on our spending. Next turn, we get our research. Culture's coming in soon. All looking pretty good. Doesn't this game have supply chain produce certain nine? Yeah, that's uh, lowered bucket faith. That's what we're literally working on right there uh, because we have meat and we're looking to upgrade it to salted meat right now. That's not the most glorious of all supply chains, but it's a pretty decent one. Um, yeah, you're right. There's a scrubland to the south. I guess I could just use it for now and not do a replacement. We'll put another salt house in here. There we go. We're now 200% on the food need. In fact, we've got a little bit of room to spare. Um, it could use a little bit more housing, if nothing else. 
to meet the needs. And yeah, now we have one meat that's currently just sitting kind of unused. Well, it's still worth three food. We do have enough clay. We could do some brick stuff. Oh, is this thing broken? Although I don't need it right this second. You're going to have force. You're going to have heals. I don't think Nico needs all these clay pits. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go in here and I am going to go and slap down. Oh, yeah, I probably want the villa. I mean, you don't need that much housing right now. Yeah, total of 10, like the dwelling would actually bring us to 11. So that would bring us to 200% now. You know what? Maybe I'll just do that just to get the growth going. We shaped three turns of growth off of Nico. Just do this. We can always replace these later on. Yes, that means spending a little bit more improvement points. But I think in this case, the trade off was going to be OK. So, yeah, I'm not worried about repairing this um, clay pit right now because we're not working it anyway. Like this clay pit's not being worked either. We just don't have enough population in Nico to work all those tiles. So that's going to be OK. We do have a few points left over. Belfast is sitting at 200 points. They're happy. New York. Oh, New York's about to hit its um, population cap. What we might look for in New York is to throw another town in here. Or I could spend, if I had a bunch of engineering points, I could expand an existing town. But New York's got room for another. So I suspect, actually, maybe I'll do that right now. Let's rush this culture. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. We're going to create town. And I don't think you work the town tile. So if we put the town on the tundra, I think that works out pretty well. And then we can surround it with improvements. So we could go over here, but that sort of pushes towards um, Sozu. Again, not pronouncing it correctly, but that's the way I'm doing it. But, you know, it's getting a little tight over here. I think we just encourage New York to expand in the opposite direction. Oh, yes, you can specialize the town as well. Now, that's that's what happens when you do it to level two, which is also good. That's true. But we don't have the engineering points to do it. In any case, right now, I'm just looking to lift the population cap in New York. So, yeah, it's two, two towns. Uh, there will be text later on that will give us more options for that as well. Okay, we do have a little bit of improvement points left, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. You're going to move over here, and there you go. Topeka. We're going to work on boosting the integration. Oh, you're you're nearly there anyway. But what the heck? More wars ending. Right, we got our medieval university. Heck. And then... Yeah, we might still try to do the Age of Discovery. Machines is the better logging camp. The workshop building's pretty good. I mean, we're going to want professional army. We're going to want organized religion. I'm sure we're going to want feudalism. I suspect we're going to come and fill all the Age of Kings stuff. So it's mostly a question of what has the most value in the short term. And I don't know. It might just be. If the large pizza parlor over here gives us culture and knowledge. I think that might be the thing to go for first. Yeah, I want the engineering XP for castles would also be very nice. Um, if I did in next turn integrate Mung here, we could build a bunch of docks. Now that's also uh, what could happen in Seattle. Though again, we'd have to integrate it for that to be the case. So Belfast isn't coastal. Nico could be coastal, but currently isn't unless we went and eat some tiles. New York has one tile over here that's already a dock. Uh, from Plano, we might go and expand into another one, but. Is that going to change where we might want to integrate? Just to do the Age of Discovery and see what it's like, because I've never done it. Now, if I do want to integrate, I need government points for that. I could just integrate Sozu here and build the docks. I could integrate Sozu, build the docks, and then release it as a vassal again. I mean, it's sort of a waste of government power. But it's kind of a low priority city to keep as a vassal. Or keep as a city. Or we just do Seattle. That my envoy is not here.
Get one more to get a paradox. We need we need four docks. I don't I don't know if you get the points back. I kind of suspect not. I kind of like this idea. Now we don't we don't actually have to do it right away. We just have to do it because I've got to research my third tech in Age of Kings. And then if I want to start researching the Age of Discovery, we'll need it then. So I don't have to do it instantly in Sozu. We can still kind of consider it. Oh, right. But meanwhile. Privy Council. Bill. Oh, it's Privy Council. So there's not an actual university. Well, there's Medieval University. Does that have a prereq? Oh, it needs a region to be level four. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we can still build a privy council, which is going to give more one more knowledge than the previous council building, which seems like a good thing to build. And in New York, we're going to stop with this. And it can build the medieval university immediately, which is still just straight up one extra knowledge. So we may as well build the privy council first because it's also going to net us one in knowledge and it's slightly cheaper to build. Oh yeah, how many improvement points for dock? That's the other thing. So we just save up the dock. Um, dock is 12. So it is one of the cheaper ones. So we'd need 48 improvement points, which actually is going to be fine. We are going to have those points in time for us to make the transition. Again, no idea if that's what we want to do. Like, I don't, we have no idea if that's the min maxi thing to do, but we're going to try. Now, so I was all anxious about doing the kingdom thing, but we're just going to sit on this because we're going to be paying for the integration. Again, I'm not going to do the Kingdom Reform, but I'm leaving the reminder there. And then this army. Oh, it's a merchant. Hang on. Did the merchant get auto kicked out this time? Okay. So I wasn't dreaming. That is something that happens. Huh. I mean, everyone's prosperity is getting pretty max. If anything, I I guess I could send you to Seattle. Because you're pretty new, so your prosperity is kind of on the low side. Take you 11 turns to get there, but I guess it might still be worthwhile. Warfare, that's still fine. Yeah, we don't want to spend those. See, and then I also want to do the improvement points for all those monastery bits and all that kind of jazz. But I think I think for the sake of this is going to be interesting, we are going to go and pop that Age of Discovery. I don't think it's going to be optimal. It's going to cost. I'm also not spawning a settler right now. Well, no, I'm going to keep banking it. See, all these things were slowing down, but it'll be cool to see. Yeah, and then I like this, a little arrow. Hey, dummy, you've got a bunch of improvement points that aren't being spent. Are you cool with this? Like, that's, that's a nice idea. If you've got the points and you haven't built an improvement, if we build even a single improvement, the arrow goes away. They're like, okay, no, they probably know what we're doing. But yeah, we're saving it up. We need, uh, we need about 90 minus four, so 86. So we're going to have that next turn. Okay. See, the power is done. There we go. We didn't even have the baseline council in Belfast. So this is going to be a straight up plus two knowledge, which is kind of a big deal. You don't have the greatest production probably fix that with some tile improvement. Well, actually, Belfast, one of their issues is that um, there's not a lot of room within its borders for some things. And again, I kind of want to sit on these points, although we've got five turns for the organized religion. I could actually afford to put down a little something something for Belfast. Um, I could build the plantation here to gain coffee. Or we could just build some mines in here. Uh, Belfast doesn't actually could use the food. And, you know, coffee's cool. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to spawn Settler right now. We're not going to do the Kingdom Reform right now. The next turn. Uh, we do need some towns to spawn in. 
Is that only 40? Oh, you're right. I'm doubling it twice. You're right. We only need 48. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to integrate this now so we get control a little bit faster. Yeah, I was I was doubling it twice for some unknown reason. Now, the thing is, we could just make a ton of food in Sozu by having all these be fishing boats. But we are specifically looking for dogs. Now, they do need food. You've already got the plantation there. Um, so I will go and build you a fishing boat here so you can work that and get some nutrition and not starve out. So if we look, there you go, five of five for docks. Great. So we're going we're gonna to keep control over this for now. Although it is increasing our cultural upkeep. If you are about to expand your borders, then I might keep control of you a little bit longer just to splat down some improvements for you. We do have a lot of money. Yeah, you're pretty close to expanding out some of these. Let's do it. I'm going to rush by the Civic Monument. And then we'll queue up a granary to help you with your overall food situation. Although that will also be helped if we go and set some fishing boats. So the tuna gives you five food instead of four. So any fishing boats on an ocean tile gives you four food as a base. With a tuna, it brings up five. Um, one thing I don't know yet is if there's any buildings that have a production chain that consumes tuna and, like, improves it. But, I mean, a five food tile is pretty good. So this is in pretty decent shape over here. Um, I will go ahead and build one more fishing boat, which will max it out to 200. And then at that point, I might feel pretty comfortable doing the convert to vassal. Let's go do a save, just in case we decide, you know what, this is not desirable. I'm also going to confirm, if we want to integrate Miami, it would cost us 85. Okay, you keep the improvements, which is good. 57, good. The integration cost goes down again. Excellent. Yeah, so now we're in good shape. So we got the four docks here in Sozu, and then we've got one dock in New York. So we still have our five docks. That is still counting. Everything is working the way we were hoping it would work. So now, hmm, I do still want to say about the game. I gotta start the settler. There's the spawn settler has such a large cooldown, the 15 turns, that I definitely do want to go ahead and use it now. Can I spawn it here? That's gotta be the capital. Because yeah, we're just looking to fill in more of this land over here, stop barbarians from being an issue. I don't know if there's like an area I should focus on doing first, for whatever reasons. I think I'll just spawn it here in Belfast. Oh, I think it costs us a pop, too. Okay. And... Get you a full escort. Will, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. And we'll put you... Kind of over here. I don't know. It's. I mean, there's all the fish. Maybe maybe over here. Can I settle there? No, that's a water tile. If you can do there, you'll be able to work the fish tile right away. Maybe here. This is not a city I don't I don't think I'm going to integrate. So the fact that it's a little close to Miami, I don't think it's going to bother me much. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Okay, we're not going to do this. Um, I may as well spend this to rush the culture. And what do we want to do with it? Well, we're definitely not going to go cutting edge right now because we really wouldn't get much value out of it before it gets cut down to 30%. Um, I don't know if we've already eureka to this era. I feel like the answer is yes. I kind of wish it would tell us over here. But, I mean, this would still be three turns worth of research. Actually, well, if I'm going to do that, I should probably local reforms. I was going to say, I would like to boost our research rates. Now, we've got towns. Alexandria and Pittsburgh need some towns. I would like to boost our research because we've gone through all this trouble to get, um, uh, to get set up for the Age of Discovery. If someone suddenly starts researching the Age of, Age of Renaissance, which is the default, that would be, that'd be a little disappointing. 
Heck, we can even go into Age of Conquest because we've got tons of power, but I don't think we've got anything to conquer right now. So... Local reforms is likely to give us more. Okay, hold on. This is going to give us 60. And do we think local reforms gives you 50% more? Oh, no, that's not going to be enough for New York. Okay, we're doing the Eureka. Which will bring us to one turn to organize religion, and then we can immediately start the Age of Discovery. I just finished watching yesterday's stream. I'm not sure if it was addressed, but when you rush culture, it will not have any overflow. But the first time you hold a turn of using culture power, overflow was transferred. Okay. Oh, rushing it puts it straight to zero, of course. That makes sense. And yeah, warfare is going to cap out soon. I guess we'll just summon some volunteers somewhere. I mean, it's a lot of warfare XP for a single barbarian. Leipzig doesn't have a single unit in it. Let's just do that. Just give it a little bit of extra cover against things. I mean, we don't want to let start get to waste. I think starting in the next era, we're going to get the social fabrics, which means when we max out one of these things, we can invest it into a long-term discount for things, which is going to be nice. Nico, oh yeah, Nico does need the sanitation soon. Yeah, we've got a lot to do with our freaking improvement points. It's so nice in my uh, the Sweden game that I did the videos for. Like in the later game, I was sitting at like something like 150 improvement per points per turn. It was actually hard for me to like keep up because it would like max out every two turns. Okay, organized research is done. So yeah, we can start researching Age of Conquest. But we're going to research Age of Discovery instead. No idea what's there. I haven't spoiled it myself. I haven't looked at the wiki. It's going to be a complete surprise for me. Uh, we have the ability to spawn another merchant. Actually, I don't think I will. We were using this to improve the prosperity of our vassals, but they're all pretty much at the cap, and we still have one um, uh, merchant running around for the new stuff, so we don't need that. We could decide to spawn an envoy, um, but we don't have anything to... Oh, wait, this hastens integration, which we don't need. We've, we've also got one envoy running around. Um, maybe I'll just save it in case we need to do a bribe against an annoying barbarian or something like that, or... We're not generating much in the way of, um, diplomacy points. Near the town. We've got the expand town, which will give us access to some level 2 towns, which might be good. We could spawn some more pioneers if we wanted more monasteries. Although right now we haven't maxed out the monasteries we've got yet, so I suppose we'll wait on that. Speaking of, I think outposts show up in here. Yeah. So this one over here. Monastery. And then I'll set a reminder for another one. I have water somewhere. Wait. Are you suggesting... Are you saying the Age of Conquest is a victory age? Like, is this one of the ways you can trigger an I win the game? Age of Conquest to end game in Age 5. Is it really? For alien game victory. Oh! See, I kind of wish the Infopedia would give you a little bit more details over here. But we're not going to end the game right now anyway. So we're going to wait Age of Discovery because it's cool. Although, yeah, I guess... I guess... One of the things in um, the early, so like, let's say the old school Sibs, right? To win your domination victories or whatever, you had to go and kill every single person everywhere on the map. And that sort of stuff isn't that interesting. Um, so later iterations of things made it so that, okay, well, you, you need to achieve these particular things because at this point you basically have won it other than doing cleanup. And that might be the case over here. I will say this, if we went and won through the Age of Conquest, we could start a new game, first of all, I could be on the actual release version instead of the pre-release, although as far as we know, there's no changes. We could play it on a higher difficulty. We could also see what happens when we don't go Raiders. But I think I think I want to push through to the extended end game and see it. I think I like it. So yes, we got our monastery reminder. There we go. We'll want to build another one over here too. This is all going to Nico, which is fine. I mean, Nico doesn't, I, I think, have... Oh, Belfast has got Brewing Unrest. Hold on a second. First of all, you go over here to counter that somewhat. This is what I said. You think everything is fine, and then suddenly you move a unit out of a city, and the unrest starts to brew. So we're still generating a little bit of net unrest here. I 
Pittsburgh, you have a unit. Miami. Uh, these all have the same movement of 20. Actually, the crossbow's a little faster. I still won't get there in a turn. Okay, I mean, all it needs is one more unit to be fine. But if I, if I send an extra, it'll help bring down the unrest meter faster. Sure, we can do open borders. There is still a smoking clay pit. I wasn't worried about it because it, Nico doesn't have the population to work all those tiles anyway. I mean, I guess it did just grow, but it wasn't working this clay pit last time we were looking. We can uh, check over here. Yeah, you're not worried working any baseline tiles, so I'm not worried about it. And again, I'd rather continue to spend on our monasteries like so. And then that's interesting. We could just build a monastery in here instead of the, the trading post. The trading post would generate the goods. So this would generate the gold and send it to Nico. We could just build another monastery. We could do that now and replace the monastery later with a gold mine. I'm going to do that now because we really need our art 6P to keep humming away. I like that. We can go and take Doctrine, but I'm not going to do that. I'm saving up for Divine Inspiration, so our large pizzerias will go ahead and give us more Arts XP. Yeah, we can get the gold later. Nice icon of gold, thought it was a slice of pie. It sort of does look like an apple pie, doesn't it? Every time Quill says Nico, I can't have a thing boil from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nicolage. No, no, Nicolage. No, that uh, that joke, they've done it a few times in the series. That joke of like trying to correct someone's pronunciation and it sounding the same every single time kills me. I love it so much. I don't know why I find it so funny, but I do. All right, now we have more than enough units in here to bring down the unrest, but we want to bring down in a fairly speedy way. So we're going to do that. Yeah, right now it's generating some chaos for us, which we don't like. We are going to get chaos event. I mean, statistically, it's slightly more likely to get the um, innovation event first. But in any case, we've got enough money to buy off the chaos event, whatever it might be. So we don't have to stress too much about it. Upgrade to a large pizza parlor. We want to do this. This is going to give us, well, it already gives us culture and knowledge. All this is currently going to do is give us more pizzaism satisfaction. But in theory, this is going to start giving us some arts XP once we get the other thing. But I guess we don't have to do it now. Because we are capped on our faith generation. Oh, Medieval University. Treasury is also good. That's a lot of money. What do you think of the Canadian version of Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Oh, yeah, there was a Quebecois version. I don't know if I watched it. Or just saw clips of it. Like, uh, maybe I watched the, the pilot. No, I think I just saw some clips. So, I don't know. It was a while ago. I know there was some... Um, some concerns about some of the characters uh, maybe getting a whitewashing. Although, theoretically, you know, even if you're making a new copy of a show, do you keep the characters the same or do they get adapted for local whatevers? I don't know. I can't remember. It's been way too long. I don't remember any of the specifics, so I shouldn't weigh in. Well, um, no, meeting hall is just that. Yeah, we'll build the, the, uh, the medieval university. More tech, right? I mean, you can see the research numbers are very small in this game. Right, we're 100 turns into this game. If we were playing Civ, we'd be looking at probably a few hundred research at this point. We've got an ad break coming up here. We're going to keep slowly going through, and hopefully nothing dramatic will happen. If anything too crazy happens, we'll see about putting a pin in things. But so far, so good. Um, Yeah, may as well shave a turn off the culture. Spend money to get culture is basically what this is becoming. So now... We are currently, we our star is here. We're in the lead for the Age of Discovery. I don't expect anyone is going to come and beat us there. So I don't think we need another Eureka. Plus this Eureka is going to be worth less than last time because of the way this works. So we can focus on some of these others. We could propaganda for the anti-chaos, but there's no reason to do that, I don't think. Um, we're not going to cutting edge now because we wouldn't get good value out of it. So I think local reforms and create town are the best candidates for what we might want to do. We could local reforms in New York. It's a biggest city, get some extra production, but I think we town it up. Uh, Umong over here actually is about to reach its next pop cap. That actually might be the thing we do first because 15 is going to be its pop limit. Um, that's why it's in yellow, which is a very nice indicator. Lots of good UI stuff in here. Still some things I, I want to see because I'm very UI driven when it comes to these strategy games. Um, but that's good. And if we did invest in another town here, it does make it much more likely that Umung becomes a good candidate for us to integrate later on. 
Although it's got a bunch of desert tiles, and I mean, oh, hello, barbarian encampment. And unless, um, unless the Petra's a wonder here, I'm not sure how exciting those tiles will be. Although I think we can probably still build industry buildings and stuff on there. I don't think we can test it right now. Topeka, we were looking at doing an integration for. Um, we can do it as soon as we get 57 points again. I think I do want to integrate it here. So maybe we just town this one up. Because in theory, Topeka is going to grow a lot faster once we start paying some attention to it. Spend money to get culture. Crass nouveau rich. Yes. And if so... It probably makes sense to build the town over here. Because again, the borders next to the town can expand a little cheaper. So it's less likely to come into conflict. I mean, a little bit with Laco, but we don't really care because it's going to kind of be a vassal place. So maybe I drop the town here. Got a Tundra tile, but in, in theory, I can build some improvements on there. So that still works out okay. I think I like it. Yeah. Great town over here. And I guess I can set my... Oh, I, I don't think I can remind her this one. We can remind her most things by control clicking it, but I don't think I can remind her that button. That's 57. All right. Government XP is pretty good though, right? Yeah, about seven per turn. Not tragic. So hopefully that unrest icon in Belfast goes away. It might take a couple more turns for it to disappear completely here. And I think while that icon is there, I think it's possible for something to maybe happen. Turns remaining zero, minor unrest penalty, 90% regional efficiency. I think it was creating chaos for us. No, it's still chaos currently. So, yeah, it'll be nice when that goes. It is going down, which is important. I'm going to go and boop this guy and probably settle right where he was in a second. No, we've still not seen a wonder in this game. More little barbs. Yeah, you just chill in Belfast. Okay, I don't think there are any buttons I'm going to hit. Other than 100, we want Divine Inspiration for Arts. Oh, I do have improvement points. Where to spend? Well, Nico's got the lowest need satisfaction currently. Mostly it needs a midden. So, I'm not going to build those on the hills. Those are going to be gather spots. I think I'm just going to tear up this clay pit now and build a mid in here. We don't, as far as I can tell, we don't have an empty flat tile other than this grassland over here with the sheep. Save the points for the new city. Well, there's that too. How much is the mid? Discount that, that's fine. Oh yeah, it's quite expensive at 32. We've got, hold on, we've got a few rounds before I'm going to be integrating Topeka. No, I think it's worth doing this one. There you go, got full satisfaction. Nico's going to grow fast. It can get four more pops with its region size. Uh, region level three. Yeah, there we go. So there's a place you can see it at a glance, but yeah. Pop limit is currently 15. Done, done, done. Umang does still need a town. We'll see about that. Okay. I still wonder if maybe we should have just gone for the victory and start a new game, but I don't know. I, wa I do want to see more of the late game. And then we can really talk big picture as a group about the experience. So yeah, I'm gonna town right here. Dallas! I mean, Dallas, of course, well known for having a double seaside. Now this army is probably strong enough to go and boop here. It's stronger than 35 here because there's also gonna be some, some barbarian militia, but I think we're gonna be okay. We could still switch, but I think we'll keep going. So here's our innovation event. Machu Picchu. A military leader has developed a grand design for a mountaintop citadel. It is a sprawling city-sized fortification with plans for religious gathering places and housing for nobles. So we could take 600 bucks, but our bank account is good. We can soak the chaos event perfectly fine. This unlocks Machu Picchu, which is a building, one per nation. It gives us culture, engineering XP, and a bunch of extra production and a fortification boost. Let's do it. Wait, did I accept the freaking alliance instead of dismissing it? Or maybe I accepted an alliance ages ago. All right, whatever. I mean, it's not like, I don't think anyone's gonna show up and cause us problems. We'll just truce out with them later. We do have a lot of improvement points ready to go. 50, I have 58 so I can go in and create Topeka now. Let's do it. 
All right. So this does need a lot of attention. Now, partially, your workers don't get assigned anywhere immediately. And I don't know if there's a button to, like, listen, force assignment of workers. Like, well, I'm sorry. I can assign a worker to a spot, but just to tell the AI to go. However, you can do it simply by building one tile, one improvement somewhere, and then the AI will indeed go and recalculate things uh, immediately. Did it go and build this fishing boat right? Wow. They must have had some um, some improvement points sitting around because I built the town of Sacramento and he immediately went and built fishing boats over here. That's actually quite cool. I suspect with Topeka, one of the things it's going to be suffering with here or struggling with is production. Oh, also, things can be repaired. There you go. Just repairing this. Force them to put down some tiles. Your production rate is bad and you should feel bad. And there's not going to be an easy way to fix it unless we ship raw materials from somewhere else to Topeka, which is possible. I can build one forester here and we are we do have a tech for the improved forester coming soonish. This is just going to make a two production tile right now. It's being worked for one food, one production. It'll turn into a two production tile, which is something we clearly still need middens. But yeah, we can get production by building clay pits, but that would have to be on the grasslands. We'd have to rip up a bunch of stuff. And yeah, even then, most of the grasslands has a resource on it. Although we don't have to work all the, uh, the resources. Let's put down a midden for you anyway, to start with, because that clearly has to be resolved. And the vats here could be upgraded to a winery. So currently you don't have any wine to spare. Oh, but this is fine, because the winery doesn't consume more grapes. It's instead of making wine, which is worth a culture, a winery makes fine wine, which is worth culture and luxury. But this place doesn't need luxuries right now. It doesn't have a demand for it, so that's not going to be the priority. Does it have anything else we could production chain? I could build a salt house for the meat. Which might be fine. Actually, the ideal thing... I just build another fishery for you as well. Because you don't actually have any meat resources. You just happen to have some hunting camps that might get replaced. I'm going to go and build a fishing boat here. See, I think we'll move the dwellings off the grasslands. What's your housing need right now? Exactly 200%. Although I could also build you the um, the villas. That's probably what's going to happen. No, you can't seem to salt fish. Like if you mouse over the meat, you can see the production chain. If you mouse over the tuna, no, not at our salt house. Now it's possible there was an, uh, a tech in the Age of Iron, which we skipped because it was Age of Blood. Yeah. Midden isn't being worked. It is giving us four base production. Um, <laughs> what we'd be doing is we'd be like reducing our food to improve the mid, and then I, presumably that would break even from the needs. Well, let's see, we're at 152 total. If I do this, oh, 171. It is actually better, so the AI didn't calculate the maximum number of needs. I think it was looking at the food, and it's like, well, the food needs not maxed out, so we can still work it. But the extra four from the mid, so the mid gives you four sanitation by itself, and then four more if you work it. So overall, this is currently better, so let's do that. Yeah, it's got a tundra tile, so if we're going to build something, we could build it there. We could do some... Uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll build a, a chili villa over there next turn. And then we can rip apart this grasslands dwelling and use this grasslands for something slightly different. Possibly even just clay pits. Persian, France, and Outwar. Okay, yep. We kind of know that. All right, Topeka in terms of building... We could build Machu Picchu here, but it doesn't have the production rate. I will build it somewhere else. Kind of think... Well, maybe I build the granary just to help with the food situation. Let's do that, actually. Let's do that first. Do I want to rush you? Maybe. Then it'll definitely overkill the amount of food. I want to rush something else. Do you have a productive building? 
No, we don't have a building to boost our production here. I'm not gonna rush this. And build it organically. We're not in a hurry for this. Oh yeah. Peace with Persia is fine. New York. I want to be new New York. I will rush this. It's more expensive, but that's fine. And then we're gonna start building Machu Picchu in New York. It's our capital. Let's give it some love. Production Topeka, an Archibus and Chaos. I don't want the Chaos. I'll just take the production. It's more than a turn worth of production in Topeka, so that's good. And, well, we're capped on warfare, so we'll take the exploration. And I suppose... I don't know how likely Barbarians are to spawn over here, but let's go and give us a unit in Sacramento. Give us some extra cover. You're going to join Seattle. Thank you very much. Oh, we've got our 100. Actually, we're going to get a pop-up here in a second. There, right there. See, reminder. Well, I know it's under my head, but reminder, divine inspiration. We click on it. It's got the little exclamation mark. So now our pizzerias. Have we already built it in New York? No, large pizza parlor here. Is this not the building? Is this not the building? Large temple. I mean, is it just one called large temple? I thought that's what, um, I thought that was a generic term for the thing that we renamed to our large pizza parlor. Maybe it'll show up on the tooltip after a turn or something. Actually, we can check the Infopedia. Buildings, large temple. Yeah, large pizza parlor. Okay, so that is it. Arts XP relative to the region's population. Oh! I see. It doesn't show up here. There it is. Arts XP relative to the region's population. Okay. I was just looking for like a Arts XP indicator over here. Shit, that might even be more important than Machu Picchu. No, build the wonder first, Quill. Come on. Yeah, I was just looking for like one arts, two arts, something as a line item. Not some text. Uh, let's head back over here. Use culture power. Now's a good time to use cutting edge because we just reset this. So we're going to get a lot of value out of this, but I think we have to town up. Yeah, we're in 144 of 128. We can also confirm. I'm going to create a town. Boise. And yeah, there you go. It does carry over. Except when we spend, we just do the difference. A reminder about the villa. Right, so we're going to do a frosty villa in Topeka. There you go, which satisfies this housing need by some overkill. So I'm going to get rid of this dwelling and free up this grassland. We still don't have a need for luxury over here, so we're not going to do that. We do have a need for religion now. Now, there's buildings that could do it, but we could also... The scribe needs paper. Do we not just have another improvement we could slap down? I mean, it's fine if we don't. You know what we could do? This outpost is certainly is currently sending its production to Nicomedia. I don't think Nicomedia needs religion. Oh, it does. Never mind. It did spread over here. Last time I checked, it didn't have a need. As I say, I could redirect that. Uh, what we might need then, more than anything else, is another outpost that's connected to Pika that can give it its religion stuff. Where? I don't want to sit on any of these tiles here. I'm just looking for a little clump of hills that might be a convenient spot. Not encroaching on a city. I think we're probably going to settle there because I was going to say, right here wouldn't be bad. I could do that. I think I talked about it. I could go and put a, an outpost here. And then there'd be three hills because we could put it on the coal for now. And we could always replace the monastery later with a coal mine. That might be the spot for it. So pioneer for outposts, pioneer for outposts. Let's do that. And 
I'll send a couple units. You'll be the guard for it. And then you're just going to move over a little more, more this way to give us a little bit more vision over some barbarian spawning spots. You're going to stay in Nico, please. Cities have no unrest. Topeka still needs a little bit of love. Well, ba mostly it's the faith bringing it way down. Um, anyway, I'm going to rush this granary now. I'm just going to fix your food. And then the holy site will give you some pizzaism. The large pizza parlor as well, which is actually one cheaper. We'll also give four pizzas and which will fix it and give us art six piece. So there we go. Perfect. One thing I'll say about the game, the barbarians relentless. It's funny. People, there's someone in chat earlier saying like, oh, the it, wow, is it? I can deal with all the barbarians, just a couple armies. Does that seem right? There's something wrong. And then other people are like, man, the barbarians are brutal. The barbarians are so rough if you're not prepared for it. Also, if there's issues with unrest or chaos that is, that you're not prepared to deal with. So here we got Chaos, rival to the throne. A Knigget has rallied dissidents outside the borders of the United States region, declaring themselves the nation's rightful rulers. Must be taught a lesson. If we accept here, it's gonna spawn a pike and a knight at every region in the United States. I don't wanna deal with that. This is what we have money for. 600 bucks to avoid an incredibly painful event. Oof, that would've been bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we clear this, we could go and put the clay pit down. Clay pit's not that impressive. We do need some production to peak up pretty badly, though. We've got the one forest. If we chop it, we don't have the tech for clearing the forest yet, right? No, that's going to be an age five, which I think is the one that's coming up. Because ideally, what we want is a series of things that boosts our, that, that chain. I think we are really going to need to import things. Because, like, all we're going to do is make one wood right now, which is not going to justify a saw pit. All we're going to do is make one clay right now, which is not going to, not going to justify a, um, a kiln or whatever. But I guess I may as well put it down for now. Actually, I, I think I might end up putting a clay pit over here, too. And then all of a sudden, a stoneworks kind of makes some sense. And we will be getting some new tech later on for the better bricks. Yeah, we can just replace this later. What's nice about this is, like, these, these improvements, they don't remove the resource. If anything, you would have thought the clay pit might, but it don't. So now if we go to stoneworks and look at the kiln, it can process... Oh, each kiln is one clay. I forgot about that. We don't have the brickworks yet, which does two and more efficiently. Yeah, your needs arguably got slightly worse, but we do need to get the production going. So I will go and build the second kiln. Okay, it's not all being worked. See, now we're getting a shortage. We are short one clay because it's only working one clay pit. This farm is only producing three food. The hunting caps are also at three food. The fishing boats do more than that. So uh, what about the plantation? We're using the grape. Oh, we are using the grape right for the winery. But maybe we don't need the winery. It is nice that it generates culture. Sorry, the, the vats. I think we'll do this. We're going to be one wine short for the vats. Food's not capped. I guess it makes maybe more sense not to work the vats and instead just get the extra food from working this. We're basically capped on the food. We're being pulled back by our sanitation. I guess no one's working the midden right now. I guess we can do the thing again where we check. If I go and cancel one hunting camp and put it in the midden instead. Yeah, 134% need. So slightly better. And I guess this camp is better because it also proves the wool at the same time. All right. Apparently we have to be a little bit more on top of the AI than I expected for things. And this will get better as we slap down more improvements. We're out of improvement points. We're out of population stuff. You're going to go there. You're going to wait here. You are just coming back. Mung. Yeah, do that. And nothing problematic over here. So just sit in Dallas for now. You're guarding that spot, which is great. Exploration XP. I guess I can spawn a um, utility ship to feed some food, some, some fish into these places, right? Although I can't spawn it in a vassal, right? Yeah. 
Oh, it spawns on a dock. That's what it is. Next turn, you'll be able to start harvesting that. But I think I might do some claim territory. So if we go here, we can see places. Well, eventually you can claim mountains. I don't think you can. Well, that is an impossibly crazy number. But maybe I can claim it this way. Oh, Kraken Barbarians outside of New York. You butts are actually going to be kind of annoying. Oh, very lucky that we happen to be looking at this stuff right now. Bring you down there to form up kind of a weak ass army. Oh, yeah, I want to use a city guard. Come over here. Oh, we actually can't get over here. Wait, they can't get to me unless they go at the sea. But it's okay. We can embark on an army and go and kick their butts. That's going to be fine. Yeah, do we want to buy a tile? I mean, I spent some points here, so we've got some space. Oh, hello. More barbarians over this way. Oh, that's what this squad is for. Well, if anything, maybe I should look at, into Topeka. Um, do you have any tiles that would boost production? No, none of the tile. Oh, that oh, get one of my mouse moves a little bit here. This hill tile. We're going to claim that because we could build a mine on it. Although again, just a single one. So it doesn't fit into our production chains very well. Maybe I should claim this at the same time. Now that's not too bad because what we can do when we get some points again, we could build a couple of mines, each one giving us a copper, and then we could build a foundry or what, whatever this level of the tech is called for it that can turn those into ingots. Barbarians northeast of as well? Uh, that might be. Okay, I, I gotta abandon France here. I'm a pacifist. They didn't get a message, apparently, that I'm a pacifist. That's the problem. I guess we don't even see their needs. That's fine. Just go out here. Harvest stuff. That's fine. Okay. You're coming up into this hill. Thank you very much. You are... Yeah, you're going to come over here. We'll be ready to do a little raid out of New York. Across the way. New York, how's your unrest here? Yeah, so it's going to grow. So the one city guard isn't enough to keep the unrest under control in New York. That's okay. We could build a watch, which would give us another five unrest suppression, which may certainly be worthwhile. Another city guard would also do it because they would have eight. But New York will be fine for a little while. Sure, we could use a bribery button on some of these barbarians. Interesting, the Age of Intolerance is brewing, but we're about to trigger the Age of Discovery, so that's going to be okay. This is less than one turn worth of research. This is about a turn and a half of wealth generation, which actually is quite meaningful at this point. Our wealth generation is pretty high. I think I'm going to take the money. Yeah, I'm going to take the money. I don't think that's a straightforward decision, but I mean, uh, both options were kind of like, meh, they're fine. Not, not crazy major in any way. France and Brazil at war. Reminder mine. Yeah, so I guess it was probably for these mines over here. Now, we move, there'll be more production being taken there. Meat, we just have one oddball meat now, although that's because things aren't being worked. Yeah, your population just needs to rise to work more of these things is all we need to do. Um, if anything, I'm tempted to like get the rush here, which will fix its um, its religion need and now grow this city a lot more. This one lonely farm is not going to be useful. Okay, I might actually just focus on monasteries. So New York has got its two. I mean, we could still build... I guess there's nothing else to build over here. Okay. And Nico, I guess they're all built up as well. So it's the new outpost. So we'll save some points for that one. Best bribe for barbarians is swords and arrows. 
Okay, I can rush the culture as well. Okay, you get on a boat. Cool. You build me an outpost. And the outpost, yeah, we're going to change you so you're linked to Topeka. Because Topeka needs religion, which we are now going to supply. Again, I'm going to put it over the coal for now. And now if we take a look at Topeka, yes, its needs are being heavily met. In fact, we're way over killing the faith requirement, but that's going to grow. More of the people in Topeka are going to become followers of our religion. But there you go. Their growth rate going up is great because we've got some tiles that can be worked to keep going with the combos and things like that. Okay. Beauteous. You guys stay on guard over here. Thank you very much. Oh, you were supposed to join this army too, but... Oh, you still can? You still can. Gorgeous. And then here we booped some barbarians and... Maybe you can stay here. Springfield is close enough to Belfast that we can reinforce it with our main army. And if we've got vision in this area, then maybe we're fine. Culture-wise, yeah, I'm going to spend it for the rush. And I might take the innovation. We just got that reset. Although we still need some towns... We have a lot of towns that are currently at their five-person cap right now. Or a lot of our regions, our vassals, are at the five-person cap. Uh, we probably want to spam out a bunch of towns, because if nothing else, we kind of want our borders to expand and cover areas where some barbarians could be. Could attempt you with some nourishment, feeding all these people is hungry work. I guess I did turn off the, um, the treat stream. I didn't want it too early. I'm going to turn it on and we'll see what happens. Just, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe we some some stuff we can share with people later on. All right. There it is. We're just, we're just turning it on. Just to see. Okay. Um, it's always a good sign of a good game when there's a lot of good options. The player is making meaningful and interesting choices. Because even if we decide to build a town, let's say we choose that as an action, right? Create town. Where do we build it? I mean, Nolundi is pretty big. Although it's still got a turn to wait. But these other guys, you know, they've been sitting and waiting for their expansion for a while. One of the things to consider might be, where are we getting some barbarian issues? Where might we want to grow some of our borders? Like Seattle isn't big, doesn't need a town right now. But could grow into this area and cover it up. That could be something. There's Dallas over there. Pittsburgh is kind of awkward. Like it's ready to grow. Pittsburgh probably deserves a town to maybe over here. I don't think that's going to compete. New York can still grow in a lot of different directions. Belfast can grow out towards the north. Okay. I think I kind of like this. I think Pittsburgh, if Pittsburgh was our first settler, right? I think it deserves some love. So we're going to go and do that. Great town. Pop it right here. Now, one thing is, oh, there it is. Region Pittsburgh. I was going to say, sometimes when, see, right over here, this is Pittsburgh. This is Belfast. Which town is it going to use? I don't know if it prioritizes the ones you've got integrated. I don't know if it prioritizes the one with more population. I guess him. Thank you very much. Oh, the shawarma with garlic sauce. Again, Essentia is going to appreciate you sending that to me so much. Oh, so much. She's going to appreciate that garlic sauce. <laughs> yeah, here it says region. Bevel. No, sorry. The tooltip tells us where it's going to go, right? So I was going to say, so you have to check that. But what if we wanted to build a town here for Pittsburgh as opposed to Belfast? I wonder if we have a way to ensure that. Here it doesn't matter because I want to build it here and it's going to go to Pittsburgh. Everything is fine. But if we wanted it here and we want it for Pittsburgh, I wonder if there's a way to do it. I bet you it just defaults the biggest town. Or maybe it's random. She should have her own treat options and the ability to order one at a time. I mean, technically... And Essentia's not necessarily feeling well, so she might not want this. But technically, there is an option to do that. We had the, the oolong milk tea for Essentia on here. I currently had it disabled because unless Essentia says otherwise in the chat right now, she hasn't been feeling that well. And so the last time I, I had it, which was great for me, but if I'm having some pretty hefty food and that, I don't know if we need to do it. Don't towns have the change link capital option? Oh, shit. Undo. No. Ah. I was just clicking here to put the, the, the focus back in this window. Hang on. This is this is why I do autosaves every turn. And there's no undo option for that. There's undo options for moving units, but not for this. 
Go to the region that had most influence on title. That'd be a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the um, uh, there is an option to mark something as a dessert, Kesem, that makes it so that you can order it on a separate cooldown. So that's what I did with Sencha's Milk Tea. Also, technically, she has her own retreat stream, but um, she has to turn it on manually. Okay, rush, culture, create town. Before I get myself distracted again, click here. The set rally point, um, for the outpost, there's the option to change the link. I wonder if Belfast or New York ended up bordering New Orleans, I wonder if there's an option to change it at that point, but currently not. Anyway, so that's Pittsburgh's growth cap dealt with. We may have to redo a few things that we did earlier. I don't remember. Oh yeah, you have to build your outpost here, which is what we're gonna be spending some improvement points on. These guys, oh, well, there you go. These guys here, just go back to C. Um, you guys are gonna chill and defend that outpost. You guys, oh, I think I just said I was gonna put them out here to do some eyeball spotting. We got a reminder for the mine, but I think I'm gonna wait for the outpost and we're gonna end turn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they'll, um... It still did the age of discovery. <laughs> oh, wow. It was going to be salty there. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, this is the turn we're supposed to trigger the age of discovery. Don't intolerance me. If nothing else, I've been building tons of religious buildings or people should be satisfied. I thought it was religious dissatisfaction that increased that meter. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Age of discovery. Woo. Launch expeditions into cities of gold with conquistador units. Once explored, cities of gold can be worked for rare goods with high resource yields. Oh, this is exciting. I haven't seen this at all. Discover new reward camps on land and water. The social fabric system is unlocked. That's just, that happens for all the ages of this tier. I think it's age five. Uh, and new governments unlocked. Excellent. Okay. And yeah, we get lost city expeditions are now available. Upgrade scouts and conquistadors. Okay. I don't think we have any scouts left anymore. We had one at sea, but I think it got booped. Cities gold are discovered by going on Lost City Expeditions. After discovering them, claim their rare rewards with a trade post built at an outpost. So we're going to need some more outposts, maybe. New world camps are rewarded, uh, revealed on the map. These include camps spawned in deep water tiles. Use deep water vessels to claim these rewards. Okay. This is interesting because this is going to feel a little bit like when you unlock archaeologists in Sub 6. Except it's a mechanic that you won't see every game. Because Age of Discovery is one of the four ages you can go into at this point, and it's not one of the standard ones. Lots of games we won't see this. So new units, new buildings, the Grand Theater. That's probably going to generate art XP for us. Yes, it is. That's good. Waterworks. Oh, yes, this is a great... So this is a building, not an improvement. It's a building that gives us sanitation. It's also an upgrade... Or sorry, it also upgrades our region level. It is an upgrade over the base unit, which is the aqueduct, but we didn't get aqueduct because I think there's no aqueduct in the Age of Blood. So normally this would be an upgrade to this. Here it's going to be plain old boost to us. This is going to save us from building a ton of middens because a midden is four sanitation, an extra four if worked. So two middens being worked by two population is 16 sanitation, which is about the same as this water work, which doesn't take up a tile, doesn't use any population. This is going to be huge for us, very helpful. We also have the house improvement, which is an improvement over the dwelling, although not the villa. The house does have 12 housing, which is two more than the villa, and generates some wealth, though not that much. It is cheaper to build, but I think villas are still going to be more attractive for us. And we do get an upgrade over our middens, now the trash heaps. So now you can compare a one trash heap tile. So A, it's a tile. B, it still needs a worker to being equal to the waterworks. In practice, we'll build waterworks everywhere and then still need trash heaps, but you know. <coughs> Unless there's bonus somewhere, the midden only gives four sanitation work, not four plus four. No, it must. It 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 must because none of the math. It it must. Right. If we take a look at um, the Pika here. Now, one of my complaints is it's a little hard to see sometimes which the tiles are. So here, it's being worked for four sanitation, but it's giving us all that. If we take a look, we've got in this city, we have one midden. That is being worked and our sanitation we've got well we actually got nine i don't know where the extra one is coming from but the if i go and cancel this we are still getting the sanitation from this tile you can see it's five of six 
and then if we work it. So, and that's what it says for the minute. You can see it says four sanitation, work four sanitation. So we get a total of eight. <clears throat> okay. We've got improvable tiles, so these middens could also be upgraded to trash heaps, which if we upgraded one to a trash heap, we just get rid of, um... oh, we don't have any extras. Uh, this can go, but first, let me check my outposts. Were they all upgraded? No, this one here, I didn't do the, we didn't do it because we reloaded the save. I was like, hold on, I did this. And the other, maybe this is why we went into the Age of Intolerance, is because I also didn't change this linked region to Topeka. Now, if we take a look at our regions, York's religion is fully satisfied, Nico's is fully satisfied, Topeka's is fully satisfied, Belfast is not. But we're out of. Oh, look at that! How cool! Belfast is not. Uh, so what we need is we need another. Um, we need another pioneer make one that's linked to Belfast. Now that can be anywhere, it can start anywhere on the map as it turns out. We just got to look for again, another collection of hills that I won't feel will get in the way of any of our cities. Although at a certain point, I might just have to accept it. Like I could slap it down here and yeah, it's sort of in the way of Nico, but it gets two hills or maybe here. Uh, this actually gets us three hills. It is sort of kind of in the way. No, I think that's going to have to be worthwhile. Let me do that. We're going to take that unit with us. Let me move you from Portland to Nico because you might need you for unrest suppression. Oh, which was growing. Oh, and it's still being generated. Okay, you just completed that. We could get a watch. I think that she, the, the fastest way is maybe just to build a city guard. Now, this does have an upkeep, whereas the watch doesn't. The watch is only five unrest suppression, which isn't actually going to be quite enough by itself. Yeah, I'm going to just rush the city guard. Because now it's going to have, now it's going to be fine. Negative unrest. Good. We might still build some more stuff, but first, we're going to need to get our large pizza parlor. Very important there. The next time we get a culture ability, we're going to want to try to do a peaceful revolution. Because we have, uh, uh, no, we haven't done the kingdom reform yet. Okay, so that's what we're waiting for. We looks like we did get a conquistador for entering this era. That's nice. So we know where one city of gold is. I'm just trying to see if, I mean, it's right, right over there is one, or at least one of those sites. I don't see another one at a glance. No chance they uh, show up in our tool. You know, that would be maybe nice. <clears throat> the watch is obviously the flaming fist. I serve the flaming fist. So here's something I don't know. Oh, yeah, that huge deficit. Yeah, okay, so that wasn't great. I should have landed there, but I've never done it before, and I want to see if you could just right-click to attack and what the modifiers were. It's real bad. So, I'm just going to come over here and do that instead. Like, there was no reason for me to do it, but I wanted to see. Um, right, so you're guarding New York, which is fine. We do have some upgrades. I do have some points. Uh, hold on. Were my outposts completely done? Right? Yeah, because there's nothing else to do there. Nothing else to do there, especially after, like, the little reload. I want to double check. Yeah, you're all good. Hmm. So upgrades. Belfast is the one that's the least satisfied right now. Oh, it has expanded its borders, so that's good, because we need to do some things over here. Well, the big problem is lack of religion. Right. Which right now, and I love this feature. I only discovered this last stream, this little button here to see a list of everything that improves things. Yeah, I could build the religious scribes. But we need paper to take advantage of it. So we don't have any improvement buildings that could be built to support it. That's fine. I mean, we do a lot more production here. Um, you have a smattering of a few raw resources. You're not food rich right now. There's a, oh, that hasn't been improved. That's interesting. So we could get a second rice. Rice gets milled? I think it does, right? Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm gonna plantation here for the rice. Now we have some rice and the wheat. I'm gonna go cooking. Yeah, we're gonna do a mill to mill the wheat or rice. What's interesting is I wonder if we can take one and one. It says 
Converts two wheat or rice to two flour. I wonder if you had one wheat, one rice. Oh, we could test it, right? <clears throat> so let's say I remove a worker. Here we go from the rice planted. Yes, it does take the mix. It is consuming one wheat and one rice to power that. Oh, and actually we've got some excess food here. So I guess just go work in the hills for now for some production because we're already capped on our food now. Hey, we're at exactly 200%. Now, the wood to paper chain isn't that appealing to me right now um, because you get you only get one log per logging camp. You, oh, which actually these are being worked. Well, we may as well build the foresters here. Oh, OK, because I would say these tiles are being worked. And I'll put a little reminder for next turn to do that. Oh, we can modify our social fabric. Now, this is something that I kind of wish I'd done slightly differently the first time through in my Sweden game because there is an ability to go into an era, an age, that needs you to have a certain ranking in the social fabric in a particular category. Now, I think, I don't know, it might have been in this era, which we can't do because we're, we're in a special age here, so the next age has to be standard. I don't know what the next age is, the next one are. If I, uh, all right, well, you know, we have the, the wiki up. So let's take a look at ages so i think this is age five let's see here age five age of discovery yes okay so age six is gonna have to be age of enlightenment so the next time we get a choice is for age seven so we're gonna peek ahead and see what we got age of revolution age of aether which requires some uh floating balloons age of ignorance age of harmony can we quickly see the prereqs for these ages Because that's what I want to see here. Although, if we could just go Age of Aether, because it sounds pretty cool. We'll just have to make sure to get the tech for the uh, the flying balloons and build at least five of them. <clears throat> so I think we'll probably do that. So I can spend these social fabric points. We've got two to spend over here. Um, you can see you get discounts in various categories. So organization decreases expansion costs. Insight decreases research costs. I think we're going to go Insight. Um, tenacity is upkeep, ingenuity is improvement cost, which is kind of nice. Tolerance just flat out gives you some wealth per turn. And community is unrest reduction everywhere, which is kind of handy. But I mean, we're going to take the research cost discount, right? I mean, come on. I'm going to put two points in there. It's not much. It's only 2% per. And we can preview this, right? I'm sorry. Okay, that's actually a substantial unrest reduction. Now, every time we cap out one of these categories, we'll be able to dump all that sort up XP to get plus one in that. So if we max out our warfare, we'll be able to click a button that will consume all the warfare XP and give us plus one tenacity. So one of the things is if, if we think one of these categories we're going to end up with an excess amount of XP for, um, that's naturally going to go up without spending. I don't know. This community might be really helpful. Yeah, the insight's not giving us much of a discount. Eventually, we'll get to 10% discount. I mean, it's something. Don't get me wrong. I think this unrest reduction is going to be super handy. Brick it. I'm just doing it. That's going to give us a lot more flexibility. I don't remember. Are we still in a war with someone or do we peace out? Oh, Brazil. Let's peace out, dude. All right. First tech. Now, we may, in fact, want to go back to Age of Kings and fill out a few things. Every single one of these techs was incredibly appealing, and I think we're going to want it. So the question is first, let's take a look at all the text in the Age of Discovery and then make a, make a decision. Remember for Endgame to have at least five points in all type. That's right. Thanks, Bio. That's right. Um, let's make a decision about whether we're going to grab one of these early or not. I, oh, there's some cool new text here. Okay, printing press. I think this might be standard. So printing press converts one paper into a book, which is worth two knowledge. That's quite good because I think the previous printing thing was one paper into... I don't remember what they called it, but it was only worth one knowledge. And the, the, the whole production chain didn't seem too appealing. This is quite, quite a lot better for tech stuff. We also get the paper mill, which converts two logs to paper. That's the other thing. The previous paper thing was one log into one paper. Here we have much, much more throughput and it makes the, the tech chain much more viable. So here currently with our current tech, we build two foresters to generate two logs, feed them into one paper mill, and then build two more printing presses and let's still think about that. That's 
five improvements and five people to work it to generate a total of four knowledge, four luxury. We don't get the wealth, we don't get the production because it's all getting converted along the way. Is five tile improvements and five workers worth four knowledge? We don't generate that much knowledge. Four is actually quite a lot, but that's a big investment. You don't have the option for age alchemy for age six. What stopped that from happening? If you're in a special age, the next age after that is always guaranteed to be a standard one. So we are in a special age, the age of discovery. Therefore, we have to go into the standard age of enlightenment next. So as I call open sailing. So this probably gets let's just go into the oceans. We can build Caravel units. We can a scorpion boat, a warship specializing engagements with other ships. Okay. A harbor. So this is an upgrade over our docks, which is worth more wealth um, and gives us exploration XP, although I think the dock does as well. We can build a trade company. This gives us import and export slots in our cities and generates a bunch of production. This is very tempting. We're probably going to want this everywhere for the production, if nothing else. And it gives you a, us a lot more flexibility for how we deal with goods in our cities because of the import and export slots. Uh, there we go. Allows to transport units on deep water. So now we can go visit the other continent and see what kind of shenanigans they're up. It also gives us free caravel. Cool. Technical engineering. Civil engineer building gives us production, engineering XP and improvement points. Obviously, we're building that everywhere. Lifting tower, three more improvement points. Probably we end up building a bunch of these as well. Brickworks. So currently we have a kiln, kiln, which converts one clay into one bricks. This is a building that converts three clay into three bricks. So we can feed three clay pits into one brickworks. But wait, it gets better because I believe this clay mine is an improvement. I think this clay mine generates two clay. So then what you really want is you want three clay mines for six clay, assuming I'm remembering the, the numbers correctly, and two brickworks. So a total of five buildings and five population, but it's gonna generate a total of, you're gonna end up with six bricks in the end, which is gonna be worth 12 production and 12 improvement points. That's a lot, not to mention the extra engineering points along the way. So that's quite good. Sawmill, this is also very important. This converts four logs into four lumber. <clears throat> and this is also how where we unlock our clear cut power, which lets us spend engineering points to convert a forest to flat grassland, <laughs> which has pros and cons. Levy workers generates more. What we don't have here is an improvement over our foresters. I think there might have been one here. Yeah, this logging camp is an improvement over the foresters. So if we're gonna do wood-based things, we really need to get machines for the logging camp as well as the technical engineering. And over here, we have Baroque, but you know what I always say, if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. Don't fix it. Don't fix Baroque Sculptor. This is an improvement on our tiles. When you work it, it generates culture. It also converts two limestone or marble to two statues, which gives us a bunch of arts XP. Which actually we could use some arts XP right now, but I don't know if we're gonna go down this branch. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Unsubscribe, yeah, it's probably for the best. Baroque Musician Building generates an arts XP, and when you build it, it gives you plus one social fabric wild card. Ooh, you can build it, send it anywhere, that's nice. And we got the textile mill here, which is an improvement over a previous improvement. I think we have the weaver that turns into textile mill. Auto Machina. Mechanical Knight. I mean, it's too bad we don't have anyone to fight because that's cool as shit. Uh, Ornithopter Scout, non-combat unit, so flying unit. We're going full like uh, Leonardo da Vinci stuff here. Giant crossbow, oh, I like that a lot. Deference, cultural district, it's an improvement that generates arts, XP, and culture. Canton Office is a building that gives diplomacy, government, and culture. Nothing wrong with that. And when we complete this, oh, gain innovation points when completing City of Gold expeditions. So it's tempting to do this before we start doing City of Gold stuff. Although we have tons of priorities. Noble Court. Museum. Gather City of Gold. Oh, I, we probably build this on top of City of Gold. Okay. Um, court Painter is a building that generates unrest suppression and gives us luxuries. This, we gain 2.5 times attack against barbarians. Good news, we don't have to build any new or modern units. Our existing units, we're going to continue to slaughter all the barbarians with ease. Soldier Doctrine gives us a social fabric wild card. 
and that enables conquistadors to deploy pioneers for building outposts. So that's quite cool if we're going to lean into that aspect. Ah, I don't know what to do. Because I also want probably every single one of these. I don't think we're going back this far. We, we don't we haven't figured out horses yet. They're like weird defense. I mean, we could literally instantly research it over here. Um, we'd only be doing it for the additional defender in town capitals and towns, which might still be handy, but I think we can live without it. I think we go technical engineering and set up some clay stuff. I'm just thinking in particular for Topeka. You think completing an age gives us a society point? Not really? Okay, we can check on that. Yeah, we can have open borders, that's fine. Hey anyway, what? Let's let's quickly go back. We we Let's finish defense and see if that gives us a, a point to spend. That actually would be kind of handy. Yeah, we're going to have to build some ships. This poor fishing boat's just going to get obliterated and there's nothing I can do about it. I guess I could bribe them, but I don't think that's worthwhile. I think... Oh, I hate that I can't check it right now. I think Exploration XP is what we want currently. Because we might want some more prospectors. Oh, we oh, oh we spawn conquistadors this way. Ah, well, I think we only need the one right now because we only know about the one city. All right, like I don't. You guys have better eyes for this. Oh, barbarians over here. Okay. I wonder if there's only one per continent. Yeah, I don't see another one. Oh, yeah, no, that's that's the one we saw before. Right, we're gonna come here. We'll make an outpost next turn. I mean, I can run you away, but I don't think it's gonna help. Yeah, we got a free conquistador. So we don't need one right now. Minor mines. Um, I guess I'll probably still do that. I think there was a mine available in Topeka or a couple of mines available in Topeka. So I'm going to do that. We could set up quarries and go to stonework, but I think the mines are probably the better way to go here. And oh, we're out of points again. Looks like cities of gold spawn the same way the Age of Hero stuff spawns. It'll have a name tag. Oh, hold on. I do actually still have enough for a forester. Which I guess I'm going to put down here because Topeka does need the production. You still need the sanitation. Um, yeah, we'll see what we can do about that. Hmm. What's the red blinking fist? Yeah, we'll take a look at that. So this is letting us know a new form of government is available. We can have a violent revolution now, or if I wait for my culture to fill up, we can do a peaceful revolution. Assuming we finished this. This is what we need for the peaceful revolution, and we are going to get there just fine. We'll actually be able to finish kingdom next turn, and then in two turns, well, actually on the same turn, because I'll probably buy it, we'll be able to do the peaceful revolution into a new government. We can spend military XP now to upgrade some units. I suspect it's... Oh, it's the crossbow. Hmm. Oh, it's... We have an archer that can be upgraded in crossbow. Yeah, may as well. Although... Ah, see, tenacity. Now we have the ability to ma to spend when we hit max to get a social fabric. Let me go ahead and upgrade you to a crossbow. I think that's going to be okay. And yeah, these houses... I actually might replace a bunch of these housing with the villas here. Wait a minute. Did I lose a unit in all this? You're not my military unit, are you? No, you're the utility ship. Just probably gonna get killed. Okay. I like, yeah, this spot here is gonna do this. And it was Belfast that needed some religion needs. So you're gonna be linked to Belfast and we are gonna go monastery, monastery. Also giving us more arts XP to continue to work on theologians, which desperately need it. Okay. We now have a button expedition. Pay your exploration XP. Cool. Oh, yeah, and we get this interface. Okay. I've seen this interface before. 
for revisiting the landmarks like Mount Everest. Collect reports. The locals say those who seek the underworld, the place of fright, will return with great treasure, but risk eternal torment and death. Well, if we pay 10 exploration XP, we can get we we can get a 20% success chance boost by having a preliminary team. This seems an easy decision. Let's do that. Bring us up to 70. Good. Yeah, you just sit tight and fortify. You sit over there and hope you don't die somehow. You are going to defend this site, my friend. Okay. Yeah, I guess we do get yeah, we do get the uh, the wild card. So maybe what I should do with this is I should try to spend it on things we have the least amount of because there is a special age. I can't remember which one it is where you need to have five in every single one of the categories to get there. So let's put these wild cards in one of the ones that we don't have much in. Let's do the improvement cost discount 5%. That's a pretty big jump per point. OK, so that's good to know. So there's going to be some value who are maybe going back and finishing these ages. I might not do the Age of Blood still. The Age of Kings, I can actually see this getting completed because I think every single one of these is useful stuff. Unless we just push all the way through, like feudalism has some upgrades for some improvements. But if we keep going, eventually they'll be like they'll be like like tractored farms or powered farms or something. I don't remember what they call. It. So we could we could skip plowed farms entirely, but it's pretty far away. Yeah, Age of Blood's like five turns to compete. That's like that's a that's a, the tech that's more useful. Although there's gonna be overflow. I think there's gonna be a lot of these like zeros. This is a one, but it's probably a one with a bunch of overflow to the next one. So in practice, this might only be two or three turns to complete. Maybe it's worth it for the point. Well, the point's just a slight discount right now. We can always save this if we need a wild card later and we just power through and do it in bulk. Okay, we're going to get machines so we can upgrade our, our logging camps. I think there's going to be good value in that. Nico's got a bunch of forests that we could improve. New York's got a bunch that could be worked. It's not even improved yet. More wars that we don't care about. Conquistador. Let's expedition the next level. We're capped on warfare, but we might need warfare for this. Raise funding. It's not even clear where to begin the search. The expedition will need to be well equipped to succeed. So we can raise funding. So we literally get 25 bucks. We can get 20 XP. Or we can pay 50 wealth to pay the funding yourself. 20% success chance. Boom, we're up to 90. Oh, we're going to get XCOM. You just wait. Kingdom Reformed is now available. So we're going to do this. Generate two more culture in our homeland, our, our capital. Give us more innovation here. And let's just rush this culture. We can now peaceful revolution. Now, if we do that, I guess we probably lose the bonuses of this particular kingdom, of this particular um, government. I think that's probably fine. So we're not using the conscript immortals. Maybe we do maintain it, but I don't know where we refer. Oh, here we go. No. Okay. Does anyone know? We keep these. Replaces everything. The only thing we'd really lose, I would say, is the 5% prosperity. I mean, the order research is nice, but we haven't had the spare government power anyway. We're too busy doing gov like government things. So I think I'm fine. We're going to go into a peaceful revolution now. Oh, it says it at the bottom. Select a new government will place all buffs and unlocks your previous government. But the new government will be more powerful, so it should be okay. Options. Empire, feudal monarchy, and republic. I guess we could have peeked at the other one. Let's take a look at empire. Empire governments build naval dominance, leverage that power to gain culture and wealth by conquering, conquering, integrating, and exploiting vassals to obtained on the warpath. So it's going to, I mean, it's going to buffer capital output. That's just the way it always is. And our homeland output over here, that's fine. Um, domain XP max goes up to 300. Now, that's actually an interesting idea. If we delay getting the new government, our domain XP max isn't going to increase. I'd have to reload the save. I can't back out of this. I mean, we can bank more, but then it increases the price of consuming this for the social fabric. So Empire, what do we get? Upon conquering capital, see, again, unless we're going to go massively build a huge navy and go overseas, we're not going to be doing this much. Vassals are half price to integrate. That's kind of nice, although may, that's probably, yeah, that's only conquered ones. So it brings it from 50 to 25. Locks galleons. 
reduce culture upkeep cost per region. So this really does benefit integrating a lot of stuff because integrating regions is increased your culture cost. This brings it down, gives us a discount here. I'm not sure that's our vibe right now. What about feudal monarchy? Throne room, I like having a throne room. Vassal prosperity increase. I mean, we're currently already capped, but that's all right. Oh, this is what he did in the video. Uh, two times vassal internal improvement points income. So this really buffs the crap out of our vassals and we have a lot of them. 2X vassal population growth from terrain and wealth and improvement points. Oath of fealty, increase the population of all vassals. This is just a button I can hit. It just gives plus one population in all vassals and it does let you go over the population cap at the same time. Very nice. Bunch of free govern XP from vassals. Um, vassal prosperity max increased as well. Uh, diplomacy XP from vassals, we might end up skipping that one. And then yeah, you can get the, the thing at the end. That's very tempting. Republic. Yeah, this would be replacing basically the other um, uh, prosperity generation. Republic governments build fewer, more populous and more powerful regions around the palazzos, generating extra luxury, resource and other regional needs. This sounds like the you've gone tall. So it unlocks the palazzo. The palazzo, so is it an improvement? No, it's an actual building. Gives you production, government XP, improvement points. And then over here, it adds plus five food, housing, and sanitation to that. So yeah, we can build one of these in every one, single one of our cities. Warehouses get more exports. Atelier Studio is a building of knowledge and luxury. Palazzo gives a region level. Luxury, luxury, culture and arts. That's not bad, actually. I'm tempted to go um, feudal monarchy again because we do have a lot of assholes. We've got 15. We might integrate another one, but again, because of the increasing unrest costs and culture costs, we're never going to create that many. You getting Natalie Portman? I can sort of see it. But here we get like, I mean, she's a little tired, but she's got cool hair and a cool dress. The weight of leadership is upon her and she's got a cool crown and an excellent scepter. Republic is more or less focused on building it. I think the feudal monarchy is an a easy pick for our current situation. So we're going to do that and we'll switch to it immediately. Even though it resets some of our bonuses, that's going to be fine. Theologians can get another thing. Right, we can pick up doctrines. Um, I don't think we need it right now. If anything, we might just save up for illuminated works and get the wealth. Two X population or culture bonus from religious populations. That's nice. I suspect we need at least a couple to go here. It's locked. There's no tooltip on the lock to tell you how many you need, but I think I'll save for now anyway. We do. Okay. We've got some improvement points. We can make some changes. First of all, upgrading this vats to the winery. Right. Again, we don't need it right this second because all it's going to do is add luxuries, which we don't currently need over here. This trash heap can be upgraded. That seems like a good idea. We need the extra sanitation. Boom. There you go. 200% sanitation dealt with in Topeka. Um, the dwellings, we are actually capped on housing by a certain amount. And yeah, there's upgrades. It would make sense, I suppose, to at least trash one dwelling, maybe upgrade another one to a house, or we just end up replacing them entirely. Oh, this one's on grassland. Yeah, you're getting go away. Um, we could replace them entirely with the villas. Although here, I guess the upgrade probably makes sense. You're only playing the difference, which is nice. So we'll do that. Housing is capped. Okay. We don't have the new brickworks yet, right? No, we don't. Okay. Another mine. You can work that for production. Okay, that's all my improvement points for now, so it's going to be okay. The house isn't the same as the villa. The house has 12 housing. The villa has 10. Um, but the house gives you five money. The villa gives you 10 money. And um, also, I think, a luxury, which we don't currently have. Didn't I? A new barbarian encampment spawn. We killed the one that was here. They spawned a new one. Wow, they are aggro over here. Conquistador. You can see it's conquistador things. So again, maybe we should have delayed, kept our old government for a little while, maybe saved up some government points before we went and revolutioned. The other thing, again, if you look at the warfare, right, we need to save up more points to do the social fabric. I think it actually makes sense to stay in the old government, but we did it because it was cool, but I think the other way is more optimal. 
Okay, we're gonna go and pay 10 diplomacy points here to have a local guide, a local guide us. The local guides claim the cave network runs for miles underground, but the tunnels lead directly to the surface from Jai Balba. So, cause this has a chance, uh, first of all, we only need 10% for a hundred percent. So this overkills us and has a 30% chance of destroying the Conquistador. And this could get us XCOM. So yeah, we'll spend 10 diplomacy XP, who cares? Next up, so unrest is fine now because we've got the minus 10 for social fabric. So we're overkilling that. Um, we probably, yeah, we still need these parlors. I mean, who doesn't want pizza everywhere, right? That still seems like a good idea. New York's needs, oh, it does need some housing. Oh. Yeah, let's upgrade you. That brings you to 150 and upgrade you. There we go, 200 on the housing. Um, oh, I do have enough points to upgrade. But yeah, it's only gonna cost me four to go from the midden heap to the trash heap. Good, that's gonna help out with that a lot. Food's getting a little lower now, but that's okay. We, I don't know if we're gonna end up needing to upgrade this midden, especially once we unlock the, um, the waterworks or whatever. We might just be able to replace that with something else, but we're basically out of improvement points. And I'm not gonna upgrade this right now, although it would technically give us a few more needs. He was from abroad. Yep. All these wars. Why can't they just be pacifists like me? Okay, let's complete this. Traversing through caves of still water and dead things, the expedition faces their fears in the dark. Whether legend or truth, Zybelba or Shibelba is probably, right? Um, has become a reality for those who return. Return home, dissolve the expedition. We get 100 warfare XP, which is going to cap us. Slightly over cap us, but I guess that's fine. Again, I can't, I can't interact with anything right now, which a little unfortunate. Um, but that's, that's fine. Creates the tiles of Balba, United States technology deference is crossed out. Is it, if I had the deference, I would get the innovation? Our innovation's about to fill up anyway. And I like that you get the die roll. Yeah, I don't think we got the innovation. I'm going to go and spend this on tenacity. There you go. So it increased our tenacity by a level, reducing upkeep costs, which is going to save us some money, which is nice. Um, same territory, theologians, yeps, you're good. I think everything is groovy. I don't think there's anything I'm looking to spend right this second. Yeah. All right. Hunter trophy consumed for five warfare XP. Gather a city of gold, hunter trophy. Okay. So this is what we need the outpost for. So maybe I will spawn a pioneer. These are getting more expensive though. I know there's going to be a thing that'll let us spawn pioneers from our conquistadors though. Do I just get you to wait until we get that option? Oh yeah, this is also the unit that can do expeditions at these uh, landmarks over here, which we're going to want to do. Save the engineering points to make some castles, too. Let me just park you in Springfield where you're going to be safe. I think spawnability just makes you in a spawn point. Oh, oh, okay. Actually, maybe what I should do is just send you to Mouse Everest for now so you can do an exploration there. Machines is done. Yeah, let's get the let's get feudalism. It also unlocks the uh, kitchen, which is a better building for our meat. An illuminated work. So currently we're making 174 bucks per turn. 284 bucks per turn. Yeah, that's a little bit of an increase in our income over here. Simply by drawing some comic books inside of our bibbles. That's pretty good. And yeah, you can be upgraded from a forester to a logging camp, which we might as well because it's still just one worker. But, um, oh, it still produces just one log. Oh... Interesting. Hang on, I need to find another forester somewhere. So the default forester, the only thing that happens when you work it is you get one log. Upgraded, you still just get the one log, but it deals for production by itself. So clearly, much better, right? Obviously much, much, much better. House that's capped out. 
midden. There we go. Needs are good. You could use a little bit more food, but that's not too bad. I mean, we could just go ahead and do this and gather some wool. Actually, we'll have enough wool to do some things with it. Get a second pasture. Because Nico should have two wool now, which is a fairly useful number. We might do some replacements, but we're, we're kind of out of points right now, so we'll leave it be. Oh, I need another, um, I need another monastery right there. Silly me. And yeah, do I want to go and start turning some of these things into castles for self-defense? We could just keep some units parked on it right now. Unless the castles, I think the castles do potentially have their own improvements. Safety save, although again, I get the auto save every turn. We're going to wrap up the stream in just a second as well, too. And then I'll go looking for my food. If I go and castlify you. Okay, these still exist, which is great. And yeah, you get keep defender and two militias to defend it automatically. And yes, we can build abbeys, which is going to give us uh, more religious options. Not that we need it, because I think religion is fully satisfied everywhere in our cities right now. But as they grow, they might need more. And this is the best way to do it. I was having problems in my Sweden game to sa uh, satisfy all the religious needs, because there's not that much apparently that you can do in the cities themselves. But it looks like the thing to do is to get those outposts. Well, we wouldn't have monasteries. Monasteries you only have because of theologian. But the outpost into castles then can build abbeys, which we would have access to, I'm pretty sure. Castle generates its own points. Hmm. What does the castle itself generate? Warfare and culture. Oh, that is nice. Okay, so that is worthwhile. Although it eats our engineering points. We don't generate enough engineering points right now. That might be something to look into, but we're good there. Um, outposts seem essential. Yeah, and that's the thing where I was saying before, right, is I didn't make very good use of outposts in my previous games. I know that like, I should have been using them more, and it's quite clear that that's the case. One of the problems, though, is it can be very frustrating to build an outpost and then just have it be destroyed. So you have to defend it, which... Can be a little Speaking of defended, you have no defenses there. Let me steal one unit here, one unit here, and one unit from here, because you have your own city defenders as well. And yeah, we'll probably turn all the outposts in the castles then. At least for now. Lundy needs a city, so growth is still going well. I mean, let's let's not kid ourselves. We must be dominating this game. Again, we're we're only playing on kind of a middle tier difficulty here, um, not the hardest. So we would expect with our 4x strategy game experience that we should do fairly well um but i want to go through it all and again part of me is like wow it would have been maybe interesting to take that victory with the age of conquest but i think i'm happy to continue burning through into the late game so we can experience as much as possible know as much as possible about what's, what's coming and then apply that knowledge to a harder game afterwards so we'll see there's a holy site upgrade you can build in cities more upgrades or castles via research i'm sure there's more stuff but yeah we're gonna wrap it up here folks thank you so much for coming out I am planning on streaming tomorrow. So Thursday and probably Friday, assuming I'm feeling okay, I'm going to keep streaming this daily, start at 2 p.m. Eastern time, same as today. We'll do an exclamation mark next game, or Essentia is probably setting it up over here. I will be continuing this week. The views have been great. Everyone's pretty hyped about this. I'm having fun with this. So we're going to continue to do a two-hour daily stream, um, you know, and hope I don't die. Next stream's not prepared. It will be. Sensha will take care of it, or I will. She probably will, because she's great at keeping the channel well moderated and keeping everything organized. So if you're not sure, you can do an exclamation mark next stream shortly. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to ready to kiss for luck, who should be streaming. And what is she playing? She's playing Marvel's Midnight Suns? Holy shit. I'm betting I'm betting one of her patron, patrons or something um, got her to do that. Midnight Suns, I covered in a sponsored video a billion years ago, is a like turn-based tactical combat game like XCOM, except it's also a deck building card game with Marvel superheroes. It's actually pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to watch that. And then I'm going to go eat my lovely um, shawarma. Thanks everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>